Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about ChatGPT Python API guide unofficial. How to use ChatGPT with Python? Myself Mohammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, if you are following us and our videos, you might have seen the video in which I have shown you that how we can use OpenAI directly into our Python programming language. We have used OpenAI along with Gradio in Python and we saw that how we can use the prompt and how we can do the prompt engineering. Well, for that purpose, we had to use the API key of OpenAI. Just head to your account of OpenAI and from here click on your profile and click on view api keys here i have my api key and at the moment i'll create a new one so i'll just click on it and from here i can copy this key and i can use that into my python programming language so i'll just copy this one i'll click on ok and we are good to go there is one thing and that is we only have one try or you can say we only have one chance to copy this particular key from here because now you can see we do not have any way that we can follow to copy this particular secret key for our API key. Okay, after that, now I'll show you the code that we have used in our previous video. So this is the code and here we have open AI, then we imported our Gradio and down here we had the API key that we have used previously. Then we have the sequence for AI and human. This is the prompt and this is the open AI create and in which we have prompt and we have different features and down here we have Gradio code which is right here. So basically this was the code that we have used previously to use OpenAI with Python. For the moment I'll run it for the one time and then I'll show to you how it works and then we'll talk about the chat GPT API so that you can have better understanding of that. So I'll just click on run Python file and let's see how does it work and how does it look like. At the moment it is running on the local server and this is the IP address that we can follow. So I'll just control click on it. It will open a new tab for me in my browser. Here it is and this is how it looks like. So here I can write anything and I can ask my open AI. So let's write here, please give me the code to find out the prime number from 1 to 100 in Python and I'll just hit enter. So basically what I'm expecting, I'm expecting Python code in response. So let's see if we get it or not. So I'll just click on send button and here it has started the process. And here you can see it has returned us with this particular answer. So basically it is working pretty fine and it is working just like OpenAI chat GPT. So this was all about that how we can use OpenAI. But now we are talking about chat GPT itself. Well, thanks to the repository that is open and free source and it has been created by Terry, now we can use ChatGPT as a plugin into our Python environments. Not only that, we can use ChatGPT as a plugin in many other environments as well. For example, we have Dali and we have many more. Okay, thanks to Terry and thanks to this particular repository, we have the code available as well. This is the code that is available for the Google Colab. If you are not using Google Colab or if you are not familiar with it, do not worry, I'll explain its alternative as well. Well, first of all, what it is doing, it is installing the PyChat GPT library that has been created in here. Okay, after that, make sure to rerun your runtime environment. Just click on runtime and click on restart runtime. But make sure to do that after installing your PyChat GPT library. After that, what we have done, we have imported chat GPT from PyChat GPT and down here it is taking the session token for the chat GPT. This is my chat GPT and I want to have its session token in my Google Colab. How can I get that? Well, it's very simple. Right click on it and go to your inspect element. It will open a new prompt for you. At the top, you see we have different menus. We have console, sources, network, performance, memory, and application. If you do not see application in here, just click on the double arrow. It will open a list for you. You will see application in the list. So I'll just click on application from here 
and under the cookies you see we have chat.openai.com so just click on it and here we have its detail at the top we have secure next authentication session token we need its value double click on it right click on it now and click on copy so this is the session token that we require in our google collab for chat gpt after that what you need to do you just need to go back and paste the value in here so i'll just press ctrl v and as you can see we have successfully pasted our session token down here chat gpt is authenticating that particular token that we have copied from our chat gpt session officially after that down here we have different ways that we can follow in order to authenticate this particular session first one is through the email and the password that you use for your chat gpt then we have conversation id and random uuid third one is your session token your proxy and your port number so these are some alternative ways that you can follow but i think this is the best one that is api equal to chat gpt into session underscore token so after authenticating the session token what it will do it will take the message from you you can write anything in here for example at the moment it is written here write an essay on generative ai and down here it is printing the message and on the response it has given you this content and you can see this is an extensive length of content you can go through it and you can have an idea that what kind of response was that from this particular api or from this particular library here it is refreshing the authorization token well if you do not want to do that it's all up to you but the thing is that session token that we have used in here it is only valid for this particular session of chat gpt if i just close this one and reopen it or if i sign out of it and in sign back i'll have a new session token and i have to use that particular new token into this one so make sure to keep track of your sessions after that here it will make sure to refresh authorization token for every query in this particular code at the end it is resetting the conversation well resetting the conversation is just like you open a new chat or you refresh this particular page so this was all about the code and now let's say you do not have any idea that how to use google collab and you want to use this code into your visual studio code or any python ide well for that purpose simply go to your file section and from here go to your downloads and click on download.py it will download a python file for you i have already done that and now i'll show you the code in my visual studio code so this is the code and this is how it looks like at the top we are importing chat gpt from pychat gpt but you might be wondering that where do we install our pychat gpt well just open the terminal of your visual studio code and write here pip install spychat gpt after that hit enter and you are good to go after that the second step is to import chat gpt from pychat gpt that you will install then we have the session token and it is the same session token that we had from chat gpt officially then we have the authentication criteria down here we have the query which is write an essay on generative ai then it is printing the message and down here we are refreshing the authorization token and we are resetting the conversation now let's try to run this particular code and let's see how it works or even if it works or not so i'll click on run python file and let's wait for it what it will do now it will open a new session or you can say it will open a new tab for me in my browser as you can see now it is opening a new tab for me it will open a new chat for you in your chat gpt and you will see the response as you can see here it is as a write an essay on generative ai and this is the response that we are getting from here not only that what we can do in here we can change our query in here as well so what i'll do i'll just remove this one i'll write here give me the five youtube videos ideas based on it let this one get complete and then i'll run that particular query this time i'll save my program or i'll save my code i'll just click on run python file and let's see what do we get or what kind of response we get this time so again it has opened a new session for us it will open our chat gpt prompt for us and then it will show us the result here you can see it is generating the output as number one is top 10 new technologies to watch beginner's guide to program how to learn coding how to secure and something like that 
and you might be wondering that why does it give the result for 2021 well the thing is chat gpt is trained on the data that is dated to 2021 the data after that is not been used for the training of chat gpt so now you have an idea that how it works and that was all about chat gpt and how we can use that in our python programming language but remember this is an unofficial api if chat gpt changes something this api might not work for you so make sure to use that one till it's available and that was all about this particular video i hope now that you must have liked and loved watching this one and if you have anything to ask please leave a comment below i'll get back to you as soon as possible till the next video take care